Before using any machine in the shop, you should read and understand the owner's manuals. In this demonstration, we're going to talk about the sliding table saw and how to use it correctly and safely so that you can use this for building your projects. The first thing to notice on this machine is this left side of the machine here that slides. This is like a big miter gauge on our regular table saw. This whole left side of the saw slides forward. So for the purpose of this demonstration and talking about this machine, the guard is lifted up and out of the way so we can see the saw blade as we're talking about this machine. Typically, the guard is going to be right down on top of your workpiece so that the, the, you don't have this clearance and unsafe area to work with. So the sliding table saw is going to be used for boards that are wider than they are long. So as I look at this board here, it's wider from right to left than it is long. The long distance is very short from front to back. If I turn this board, now this board is long and not very wide. We don't want to cut long boards on here or very uh, narrow boards like this. What's going to happen is we cut, there's very little surface area against the fence. And if that board moves away from the fence, we're not going to have a true or straight cut. So for the sliding table saw, we're going to cut our lumber or boards that are wider than they are long. And this is going to look like this. So the board's length is running sideways, depending on the grain. So like our other table saws, this saw has a guard, which is this clear plastic part that protects the operator from the blade. It also has a splitter, like on our other table saws, that keeps the material from coming back and pinching the blade during operation. Now this machine is not a saw stop brand machine. So if you get your fingers under the guard and cut your fingers, it will take your fingers off. Not all of our table saws have the saw stop feature because they do not make the sliding table saw in the saw stop family of tools. So before operating this tool, we want to make sure a few parameters are set for our needs. We don't want to assume that this machine is set up for what we need. So we're going to set the fences and the stops on the machine to the sizes we need. We're going to check the blade height to make sure that the blade is set to the correct height above the workpiece. And we're going to make sure that our workpiece clears the floating guard, that it's not going to get stuck or bound underneath there. Like our other machines, we want to set the blade to the correct size. So we want the blade to be 1 8 to 1 quarter of an inch above the workpiece. So we're going to set that and we're going to go over here on the saw and we see one of these wheels or handles right here and if we look at the picture it identifies what that handle does so it looks like that one's going to tilt the blade that's not the handle we want we're going to come over here to kind of the front of the machine and take a look and we'll see another handle and if we take a look at this handle and the picture next to it, it tells us that this blade or this handle is going to raise and lower the blade. So we're going to raise and lower the blade and adjust that till we get it about one eighth to one quarter of an inch above the workpiece. So I'm going to take it and spin it. I want the blade to come down. So I'm going to lower it down and watch the blade as I do this. So as I'm spinning the handle, we're going to watch the teeth and see where they are along our board. We're looking for one eighth to a quarter inch. So that's about the height of one of these teeth that we can see. That's all the further above the workpiece we want it. Don't assume that any machine in the shop is set for what you need. You always want to check things like blade height, fence settings, and squareness of the blades to the table before operating any tool. We'll notice this fence over here. And this fence is a short little fence. It's going to be used more as a stop. So we're going to set this to the sizes that we need. If we use the ruler on the table right along the edge of the metal and use that as a visual reference, that would be lined up correctly. So if you set it to seven and a quarter, 
that is going to be right at seven and a quarter. So the reason this fence is behind the saw blade is so that when we're butting up our pieces and our fall off piece sits over here, that it cannot be stuck between the blade and the fence because those two do not line up. So we can't have pressure uh, against the fence and the blade at the same time. This is going to eliminate some of our kickback or chance for kickback because we can't be stuck between the fence and the blade. That's why the fence is back further. So our hands need to have a certain placement on our workpiece. And generally speaking, when we're cutting, we're usually cutting a little bit more narrow stuff. And so if it's small like this, we're gonna take the heel of our hand right in here, and I'm gonna put that on this edge of the board. So my hand is going to be between these two miter tracks along the board with the heel or palm of my hand there pushing forward. The left hand is gonna be up over the fence there because I'm pushing and pulling these two tight. This is going to allow me to keep the board tight against the fence and to control this arm. If I don't have my hand there, I'm just pushing forward and I can't control how fast or slow that we're pushing it through the machine. So if I have my hand over the front, I can control how fast or slow we're going. For bigger cuts or bigger boards, maybe that we're holding on to the frame here and pushing on our workpiece, or maybe even further back, Maybe we're using this handle on the end of the sled or the arm here, and we're pushing tight and controlling the arm with that movement. If I'm holding onto my workpiece out here further away from the blade, as I cut, there's gonna be a lot of pressure, and it's gonna take a lot more force for me to hold onto the workpiece tight further away from the blade. So the closer I am to the blade, the less pressure and force it's gonna take for me to keep it tight against there. So I wanna be right between these two miter tracks and I wanna be pushing nice and tight against there. You're going to get ready with your hands in the correct placement. You're going to start your cut by slowly engaging the blades so that when you hit that first big blade, it doesn't cause your workpiece to come away from the fence because then your, your cuts are not going to be square. So we're gonna keep it tight against the fence. We're gonna go nice and slow till you get to the saw blade. And once you're about maybe one inch in on the workpiece, okay, then you can start to speed up a little bit for your cut. You're not gonna go super fast, but you can speed up your process a little bit to make your cut. Because once that blade engages the workpiece, then we're no longer uh, threatened to have our workpiece moved away from the fence. So our main objective when using the sliding table saw is to cut our board and have a square edge when we're done. So we need to keep this board tight against the fence as we're cutting. If it's not tight or it comes away, then we're gonna be left with an edge that is less or not 90 degrees. So these pieces over on the left side of the, or the right side of the blade as we're operating, that we're opposite the sliding arm here, these pieces are just going to accumulate and push themselves out of the way. Now typically what'll happen is they'll usually start getting to the end and push themselves. They'll end up in that chute and down in the trash. After making your cut, you're gonna move the material over so you can pull it around back for another cut. We don't want that to skim the blade and hit it and have it move or shoot your workpiece at you. You want to pull the arm all the way back so that we clear where this wood block ends with your workpiece. We don't want to slide our workpiece over for the next cut and hit this um, scoring blade. If we don't pull back all the way to that wood edge, we're going to drive our piece over that scoring blade and it's gonna damage the workpiece. So when you're using the machine, pull it all the way back and then once you're past that wood block, then you can slide your workpiece over and use that stop to make your cut. So if we take a look up here at our saw blades, you'll first see the big blade here. The big blade is what does the majority of the work. If we look just in front of that, we'll see a little scoring blade, and the scoring blade is just barely appearing 
through the tabletop surface there. And what that is doing is it's lightly cutting the bottom side of the material to score it so that it doesn't chip out so bad. We're gonna use the scoring blade when we cut plywood or uh, melamine type materials or other plasticky type that could chip on us. So if we don't use it for solid lumber, it's really not necessary, but for our sheet goods, we would use it as it's going to give us a better, crisper cut. So here's our control panel. When we're getting ready to turn the machine on, the first thing we typically need to do is quarter turn the red button to get it to pop out into the on position. Then what we're gonna do is we have to get this machine for this switch to be facing in the Y position. Right now it's in the delta or triangle position. We want to be in the Y, so we're gonna flip that forward. And now we're ready to turn the machine on. This middle green button is going to turn on the main blade. And then once the main blade is to speed, we're going to turn this back to the triangle or delta position. Once we're in that triangle position, or in the back position, we can turn on the little scoring blade that's in front of the saw blade. So now that we looked at that process, let's actually turn the machine on. I'm gonna put this in the Y position. I'm gonna turn the machine on, it's gonna get loud. Once I can hear that it's at full speed, I'm gonna turn it back and we're gonna go from there. So turn it on. So when you're ready to turn the machine on and you put your board up here, you may not be able to see the control panel. So you could lean over the arm and reach for those buttons and knobs. If you're a little bit shorter and your hands or arms aren't as long, you could walk around to the front of the saw here and get to those control pieces, the control panel, and then turn the machine on that way. Again, if you're cutting multiple pieces, you don't have to shut the machine off after each cut. Let's turn the machine on and take a look. So again, this sliding table saw is not a saw stop brand. It does not have the safety features that our saw stop machines have. Keep your fingers away from the blades. If you have any questions on how to use this machine or any other machine in the shop, please talk to your instructor so we can get those questions and issues answered so you can use this machine safely.